One of my greatest joys is being a coach educator and training adult professionals to adopt this extraordinary way of communicating and relating with people and helping them become their best selves. And yet there are some key mistakes that I find so frustrating because the answer to the number one is really easy. But before I go there, let's talk about some of the other common ones that I see all the time. One of them I call fixing, a habit of fixing. Of course, everybody in their professional lives gets there by becoming an expert in something. And we are trained and rewarded to listen for people having problems and we want to be the solution for it. However, that's the antithesis of coaching. Coaching is really about helping another person deepen learning about themselves. It's our deep listening and our curiosity on behalf of the clients that helps them to identify, how did I get in this problem in the first place? What is it that really needs to be addressed and resolved and ultimately be a choice about how they forward the action? It's really important to remember they live six days, 23 and a half hours without you in between sessions. So if they're not finding it from inside of themselves, instead of getting it from you, they're actually not gonna make the learning growth and change that you became a coach to be in the first place. The second mistake I wanna share here, it's a smaller one, yeah, it's not the number one, but it's equally important is more is better than less. What do I mean by that? One of the things to pay attention to is how much airtime do you have versus your client? And over time, you're going to find as your work becomes more artful, it will be very much client led and they will have much more airtime than you. So what does that mean for you now? It means when you're tempted to want to reflect something they just said to you, take a breath, count to two or three before you say something and say the essence in the form of a question. And of course, when you're asking questions, doubling down on the same question, asking it two or three ways, or as my good friend BJ Levy often says, the preamble and then the question and the postamble, those are all habits that you'll want to find yourself eliminating out of the way that you're engaging with your clients. Now, one more that I think is really important and quite common is what I call not finishing. As you're going along as a coach, you begin to really have fun with deep in the learning. It's always exciting to see the light bulb moments that come on for the client. However, remember, you're not there just to deepen the learning. You're also there to forward the action. Again, not you fixing, but asking the questions that are a test of commitment, helping the client to identify what are they available and ready to implement as a result of what they learned in the session? What is it that they will set up and change their routine about or lean into a resource or a partner? How will they celebrate and acknowledge when they're successful? What will support them to ripple out whatever the given situation is from that session into other parts of their life and livelihood? Not finishing gives someone a good feeling of the session but they forget it a day later when they're back in the busyness of their lives. We don't want that to happen. We want the learning from the session to sustain. And that is part of your responsibility. Now, I bet you're now wondering what is the number one? Because those all three sounded pretty juicy. And they are, of course. But the number one thing that frustrates me is that coaches are waiting way too long to engage with a mentor coach. At Invite Change, we believe in a developmental, not an assessment of performance approach to mentor coaching. What does that mean? It means that when you're in the dialogue, examining a client session recording and perhaps also a transcript, because we incorporate that, you have an opportunity to see your own coaching and to do it shoulder to shoulder with a peer colleague who's helping you recognize your unique style where you might be making some of these mistakes and help you to develop much more effective habits and methods. I had a graduate of one of our programs who 
waited to do the final second and third mentor coaching that's part of our certification program until she'd reached 100 hours. And it was really sad for me because she had 90 hours of bad habits. She had done her first mentor coaching session, as we plan, around 10 or 15 hours, and then didn't do another one. Thought, I've got this, and practiced up to her 100 hours, but then had to pick a recording to go to the ICF and get assessment, only she was no longer coaching. She'd slipped back into being an expert and fixing. So here's the moral to the story. Your mentor coach is your partner. It's a collegial conversation, peer to peer, working on a specific recording, helping you to recognize your natural strengths, how you are demonstrating the core competencies and where the choice points or opportunities are for you to strengthen and add in skills you might not be using. When you get that feedback, go away and practice. Four or six hours is about what we recommend. Notice that you're starting to coach a little differently and then come back again. Meet with your mentor coach and get confirmation that your skills are developing and what's the next stretch for you. In this way, you actually accelerate your own development and as a result, you are absolutely coaching at the level you want to be when it's time to submit your recordings for your ICF credential. Just so it's fresh in your mind right now, remember the ICF requires for a new certification or up-leveling to another certification that you must have 10 hours of mentor coaching. Seven can be in a group format, at least three in an individual format. And that means a full hour of verbal exploration and then the individual ones combined with written feedback to you. Mentor coaching is the very best part of becoming a student of your own work and really loving your life's work as a professional coach. The truth is, Working with a mentor coach on a regular basis is one of the very best ways to ensure that you have ethical professional conduct as a coach. And it gives you confidence. It's pretty quick that a client stops being able to give you feedback that's useful because they don't really know what you're doing. Where a mentor coach can help you see your work and help you have the confidence in your competency and your effectiveness as a coach practitioner. Now, I do this myself. I have a mentor coaching session at least once a quarter. And remember, once you're credentialed, it also qualifies as core competency development hours. So it adds to your renewal the next time around. There are lots of ways to find mentor coaches. The ICF has a database where you find uh, people who have identified themselves as mentor coaches. And of course, at Invite Change, we also have a team of 16 certified mentor coaches who have been well trained in our developmental approach to mentor coaching. Easy to find on our website under Advance as a Coach in either individual or group format. And I have one more special treat for you. If you look up here on this link, you're going to watch a session that I have been the mentor coach for so that you can see what's actually happening in the session as it unfolds and get a little taste of Invite Change Certified Mentor Coaching.